With the WTA season coming to a close and the ATP on its last weeks, we have some very interesting changes in the rankings. Of course, the WTA finals are going on right now. That's the only tournament left for the year besides Billie Jean King Cup. The ATP finals race is still up for grabs as well into the last week of the season, which is going to be really fun to watch. Let's have a look at who actually won last week, though, because we had some big tournaments. We'll start on the WTA side of things. We had three WTA 250s to end the season. Starting in China with Golubic beating Shrimkova in the final 6-3-7-5. And both players getting a big boost in the rankings because of it. Going over to Mexico, and we had Sonmez beating Lee in the final 6-2-6-1 to lift her first WTA trophy. And Schneider over in Hong Kong beats Bolter in the final 6-1-6-2 to lift her fourth trophy of the year. And if you don't know who Schneider is, you've got to make sure you put her down as somebody to watch next year because she's won four titles on three different circuits surfaces including a 500 event on grass so definitely one to watch next year she's got a boost in the rankings as well career high ranking to end the year so very very scary opponent and only 20 years old watch out for her in 2025 over on the men's side of things we only had the one tournament that was the paris masters and it was verev beating on in the final 6262 to lift his first paris masters trophy and he has now won five of the nine masters 1000 titles so he's still going to win indian wells miami monte carlo and shanghai to complete the set but he's already over halfway to the golden masters which has only been achieved by Novak Djokovic. So, got to keep an eye on Zverev over the next couple of years to see if he can start completing the set of 1,000 titles. Let's go have a look at the career high rankings for this week because there was a lot of players getting career high rankings. Starting on the WTA side, Schneider, she goes up two spots, number 12 in the world, ending the season with a career high ranking. And like I said earlier, watch out for her in 2025. She could do some big things based on what she's done this year at only 20 years old. Bolter, she goes up six spots, number 23 in the world, which is a career high to end the season for her. Trumkova goes up 10 spots, number 43. Monero goes up one spot to 55. Zara Zua, three spots to number 59 in the world. All career highs for them. Lemens goes up five spots to number 86 in the world. Cartel goes up seven spots to 88 in the world. And Sonmez goes up 36 spots into the top 100 for the first time in her career at 91 in the world after winning a title over in Mexico. So it's a massive end of year career high rankings for those players. And again, I'm going to keep saying this, but Schneider, 2025, watch out because she is only getting better and better. Over on the men's side of things, only a couple of names with Thompson going up two spots to number 26 in the world career high for him after having a good week in paris pirica he goes up to number 30 in the world one spot higher than last week after continuing that form into paris with a couple of wins bergs he goes up four spots to number 61 in the world and kazo goes up 18 spots to number 67 in the world after getting a lucky loser entry thanks to yannick sinner pulling out of paris and winning a couple of matches so some career high there for those guys going into the final week of the year going over to the wta rankings right now and there's no changes because of course the wta finals are underway we've got sabalenka at one fiancic at two goff at three Palini at four, Rebecca at five, Pagula at six, with Zhang at seven, Navarro at eight, Kazakina at nine, and Collins at number ten. Of course, the top eight are the only players that can gain points at this event. So we could get some big changes because there are some players there you can see that are very, very close in the rankings. And with every win at the WTA Finals, you get 200 points. So it's a very valuable tournament for those bonus points. And of course, Fiontek and Sabalenka at this stage are still playing for that number one ranking. So if Fiontek can win a few matches, and I guess if Sabalenka loses a couple, we could see a change at the top by the end of the season like we did this time last year. Over on the men's side of things, and we had a lot of changes to the top 10. But no change at the top with Yannick Sinner well and truly staying at number one, but Zverev, he goes up to number two in the world, pushing Alcaraz down to number three after winning the Paris title, which means that going into the ATP finals, Zverev avoids playing Sinner in the group stage, and it means that we could get Alcaraz and Sinner playing in the group stages, which about a month ago, we didn't think was possible. Djokovic also drops down, making way for Medvedev at number four, because of course, Djokovic lost the Paris title and a thousand points, so he drops down the rankings. Fritz stays at number six, with Rublev going down two spots to number nine, making way for Rude at number seven. Diminor goes up to number eight, which is two spots higher than last week. And Dimitrov also goes down a spot to number 10. So that is where it's going to be really interesting over the next week because those four guys, or at least the three guys there, minus Dimitrov, are all playing for the final two spots in Turin. Let's go have a look at the race of the finals because it's getting very interesting with one week to go. No change at the top with Sinner at number one. Zverev goes up to number two, pushing Elkris down to number three. It means that Zverev doesn't have to play Sinner in the ATP finals group stage. Medvedev, of course, qualified last week, but Taylor Fritz, he qualifies as well, taking the fifth spot. So the US Open finalists getting into the A to B finals again. Djokovic is almost qualified. He just needs a couple of things to happen over the next week. And he will be in the finals. Rude stays at number seven. But down the bottom, Dimonor goes into the number eight spot, pushing Rublev out of the top eight to number nine. 
And Dimitrov stays at number 10. But unfortunately, Dimitrov won't be able to get into the finals because he's too far away. And next week, it's only worth 250 points. So it's not really worth him playing. So here's the situation. In order for Djokovic to not make the finals, both Dimonor and Rublev have to win their events next week in Belgrade and Mets. And Rude has to make a deep run in Mets. So he has to get to the semis or the final or win the title to push Djokovic out of the tournament. So really, if Rublev, Rude, or Dimonor lose next week before the situation that I just said, then Djokovic will qualify. Now, will he play? We don't know because he was in the Maldives while everyone else was playing Paris. So is he going to play the ATP Finals? We don't know, but he's all but qualified. He just needs one of those guys to fall short of what's required of them next week. So there it is. They are the rankings for this week. Very exciting end of the season for the ATP. Usually this time we have, like this time of the year, we have the ATP Finals set and, and set, but three spots up for grabs, four spots, four players that are in position to possibly take those spots. Djokovic, we know he doesn't really care about these tournaments anymore. He only wants to play slams and play for Serbia, but he might make the ATP Finals anyway. Let me know in the comments below though. Do you think Djokovic, if he does qualify, do you think he will play the ATP Finals? I think he will. I think he'd be crazy not to play the ATP Finals. I mean, he doesn't need it, but it's three points for his ranking. And of course, if he doesn't play, he will drop all the points from last year, which means going to Australia next year, he could be ranked down the bottom of the top 10, which makes it a little bit awkward. It means that he'd probably have to go play one of these big boys in a quarterfinal or earlier in a tournament like the Australian Open, then maybe he's comfortable playing, especially someone like Yannick Sinner, who you don't want to play on hard courts at the moment. So very interested to see what happens over the next week because the ATP Finals race is almost over. There it is, last week's of the season underway. It's looking interesting.